So Jesus told him this story to the people who said, don't judge me by who I hang out with. They said, so Jesus told them this story. If a man has, has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? What would you do? Say if you had a hundred sheep and one of them left. You're like, ah, oh, man, that sucks. I have 99. Oh, well, that's a good, that's a good uh, rate, you know? Out of 100, 99 are still here. We're good. Many of us, uh, uh, we would leave it like that, right? No, but he says, won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness in the same place and go search for the one that is lost until he finds it? Why would a man having so much abundance of sheep as a pastor, why would he go searching up for one? Um, that, that, that gives to show us the importance of a sheep. The Bible describes us sometimes as sheep, as many of us have gone astray. Many of us, we are need to be found by God. And God is looking for us because God is not far from every single one of us. So as he decided, you know what, I'm going to leave my 99 in the safe place. I'm going to go search for one. The love for and uh, knowing how how precious and the value of one sheep is to this man. Many of us, how many of you guys have kids? Right? More than one. More than two. More than three. More than four. I'm the, na, uh, five? <laughs> Alright. Imagine you have five kids and you went into Walmart or Target somewhere in there, and then you come out and there's only four. Do you say, you know what? You know, babe, four, four, four is good, you know? Like, four out of five is not that bad. We still have four more. What would your wife tell you? Go inside, she'll pull you by your ears or just yell at you. Go inside and go get the other one. So, as uh, us, we should also look for the value of our lost sheep. And he goes to search for the lost one until he finds it. He doesn't just give it a quick glance. He goes out looking for it. Typically, when a shepherd counts a sheep, it's during at the end of the end of the afternoon when the sunset, where he's counting and he can see them all as he's putting them all, and the sun's going uh, down because he wants to put them in before night. He starts to count: 97, 98, 99. He tends to notice, man, one's missing. Uh oh, plus he's missing. So he goes. I'm assuming he's going into the night, into the wilderness. Man, these sheep are. Uh, uh, how does a sheep get lost? Well. A sheep, does he just look at his passion? Like, once he turns around, I'm out of here. I'm gone. No. Like, for a sheep, he, 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 they, they have their heads down a little bit. They have their heads down always eating grass, right? So they nibble a little bit here, nibble a little bit there, and then they see some better grass. I'm like, oh, the grass is always greener on that side. I'm going to go check it out. And that's how we uh, kind of get lost in Christianity. For us who already know of the Word of God, oh, we tend to compromise a little bit. You know what? I don't normally drink, but, you know, today's a special occasion. It's my brother's birthday, and then one casual drink leads to, okay, well, I don't have to do it every time. I can do it in the weekends, and then on the weekends, all right, well, I go, all right, now every other week, every other day, and then start, and then finally finish drinking every other day. It's more like it just adds on, and that's how we can get lost sometimes. So as this sheep was lost, and probably didn't even realize until he finally wakes up, he's like, where is everybody? Where's my, where's my friends? Where's, where's the one who takes care of me? As he's lost in the sheep, the man, the pastor goes and finds him. And he says, when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. The Bible says that when he found his sheep, he rejoiced. He grabbed it. He's like, you, and then, he, then, he, and then the Bible says that he hit the sheep. He's like, you dumb sheep, why did you get away and got astray? No, the Bible didn't say that he hit the sheep. For, 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 for the way he says it, he put it on his shoulders and rejoiced. He gave thanks because he rejoiced, and when he arrived, he went back home to carry him on his shoulders. When he arrived, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. The same way that God cares for, for us is the way this story resembles. God cares for us so much where it's, uh, we owe God our lives. We owe God our, our, our account for our sins. Now, as a rightful judge, as a God himself, it, it, it's a good thing that he, he forgives those who ask. 
But a person in this story reflects the character of God. He goes out and looks for those who, who need saving, who need a hearing of God's word. For us, we, we need a hear of God's word. We can't be distracted by the things in this life. We're distracted with so many things. Sometimes we're distracted with, um, with, with uh, the things of this life, of uh, money, uh, trying to get rich. Uh, trying to sleep around as much as we can, trying to get as, as drunk as much as we can, trying to get as high as much as we can. Some of us, we even get distracted even with school. Some of us, we want to put everything there, like, all right, you know what, I'm not going to serve God or I'm not going to really go to church, but let me focus on my career. Let me focus on my education, get things right, and then, you know what, I can see if I can met, uh, put God in there. For us, we, we are distracted by so many things. Sometimes, God's, uh, sometimes the enemy, he sends the bad things to us, and he also sends us the good things, too, to distract us. Uh, uh, today's Saturday. I'm going to get a little bit off topic, but today's Saturday. Any important thing happening today? Pacquiao. Kentucky Derby, yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> El Pacquiao, exactly. That Pacquiao and Mayweather fight. I don't know who you go for, and I really don't care. So don't, don't shut, it, shut it up. But... All right, so one thing that I was hearing about Pacquiao and one thing that I really admired is at the end when he was talking about uh, the, the conference that he was getting in front of people, he was thanking God. And one thing he said, you know what, after the fight, after when it's all said and done, I want to see if I can have an opportunity, an opportunity to talk with his opponent, talk with Floyd about God. What, what can Floyd uh, receive from Pacquiao? What 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 does the Floyd uh, doesn't have that he can't just buy? That man, he's gonna be rich today. He's gonna make like a hundred and some million just today, and then that man, he can buy anything he wants. What are you gonna offer me, Pacquiao? I wish I would I would I could be in that room to figure out what Pacquiao would say with him. He's like, you know what? Not that many people can relate to you, man. Mayweather, you're a boxer. I'm a boxer. You get money off this. I get money off this. But there's one thing that Pacquiao found out in his life, even even something that you know what couldn't be brought to him through uh, boxing or through drugs or through women or through so many things. He found God. He found a relationship with God, and he he told him the importance. He says he's gonna tell Mayweather. You can have everything. You can have the women. You can have the cars. You can have the money. I'm guessing for for that man, he's experienced it all. But uh, as Pacquiao also experienced it all, he said, you know what? There's there's something that we lack. There's something you can't buy. Even if you take all your money, you can't buy what I have to offer you. And that is the plan of salvation. That is what Jesus Christ gives us. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He made us become new. And through believing in Him, we can have a relationship with God. We can inherit the kingdom of God. You know, when we, when we die, how much money is Mayweather going to take with him? Absolutely nothing. His cars, his money, it's all going to be here. What, what are you going to take with you when you die? Absolutely nothing. You work so hard to get that education. You work so hard to get that house. You work so hard to get that car. For what? For it to be parked right here when you die? Don't worry. I'll take it when, it, when, when, it, when you guys go. I'll take your car. Don't worry. I'll take good care of it. But if, uh, until I die, someone else will take care of it. What? What is more important for a person to gain the whole world, to gain the whole world, and lose his very soul? I'm pretty sure Pacquiao is going to focus on him. You know what? For us, it's not worth it. I found a new life. Because when you have a new relationship with God, like, uh, like, God, like the way it's being shown in Pacquiao, your life changes. It just doesn't seem like Pacquiao's interest is so much on other things. He's focused on God, on, on what God has given to him. It's almost like a 360, de uh, not 360, because that means he's going through the same direction, but like a 180 degree, he's going the opposite way. For him, he's just talking about the things of God and the importance of God. Like, even Pacquiao, before he, uh, before he gave his heart to God, he would donate to his uh, country. He would help out the kids. Now... You can have everything. You can you can have the money. You can help out kids. You can help out uh, all these other people. But you can't earn your salvation. You can't buy your salvation because something that God gave, He gave it to us for free. Now the thing that costs the more, it costs the most precious thing. The thing that you can't put a price tag is our salvation. You can't purchase it, but it's given to us for free. 
So I give you guys the opportunity today. If you guys haven't given your heart to God, here's your opportunity. God says that He will take your, take your life and He will mold it. He will give you a life to prosper. He will give you a new life. He will give you a new heart. You know, it's so much joyful when you're a Christian. You know, Amen. when you're a Christian, you, 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 have, you still have problems. But you know what? You still have joy at the same time. Uh, being a Christian, you're happier. You don't have to go to sleep guilty and wake up with a hangover. Amen. I've, I've got, the, in my life, I've gotten high once. And I tell you what, Jesus is the best high I ever got, guys. Honestly, like I try, I try drugs once, but Jesus is the ultimate high. I told that to to some lesbian girl that she she knew God, and then like she's like, you want to get high? I'm like, nah. I got that Jesus, best high I ever got. Ha, huh. nice. She was all like, you know what? I think I respect that, man. That's that's real cool. And, and I pray that God reaches her uh, someday. So this is your, you guys' opportunity. If you want to take it, that, uh, that's between you and God. You just ask God into your heart, guys. So let's, let's just uh, bow our heads and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you, Heavenly Father, uh, plant that seed in our heart, that your word spoke to our heart, Heavenly Father. Lord, that you, Heavenly Father, open up our minds. Help us to see, God, of what's really important. What is more important to us, Heavenly Father, the material and the things of this world that is temporary or a, or a promise that we will be with you in heaven for eternity, for our salvation? Because all joyfulness, all things of the Spirit come through you, God, because all things of evilness come from the enemy, God. Lord, I ask for every single one here, Heavenly Father, if they have not uh, accepted you into their lives, I pray that they make a commitment, God, that they realize that they are sinners, Heavenly Father, just as I am a sinner, but that we realize, Heavenly Father, that, that God died for us, that God, that you send your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, and that through his sacrifice we are saved and we accept it, God. Lord, I pray that every single one of us be protected as we leave here today. Lord, that you guard us, that you send your angels, and wherever we go in our cars, as we go to visit our families, Heavenly Father, that you protect our families and that you bless our way along the path, God. In Jesus' name we all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.